This mod is pretty badass. It aims to turn Gordon into a Zen Slayer, I guess. It's one of those Half-Life Remix mods. These usually just meme up the base campaign. Brutal Half-Life, specifically Beta 2, is a huge breath of fresh air in that regard, since it attempts to provide you with a fresh gameplay experience. There is one major issue with it, however, but we'll get to that later. Each weapon has had their sound and visual effects revised to give them that extra kick so the butchery feels right at home. And yeah, it has the gore level pumped up to ultra. This mod does things with bodies I thought weren't really doable in Half-Life. You can even shoot off the alien grunt's arm off to get the hive hand early. Don't know why you'd want that. I'm probably repeating someone by saying this, but I also suspect this intricate gore system messes with hitboxes from time to time. Just a guess though. Besides the revised effects and detailed gore, this mod does feature a kick. The kick might seem a bit slow at first, but trust me, it's good. You're not only able to kick the ever-living shit out of a head crab, but it's also able to stun and push back almost any living being, granting instant access to a melee attack and a potential huge advantage if you get close to your target. And if you're anything like me, who probably cares way too much about ammo management when you can already carry a ton of shotgun ammo, you'll also see being able to kick open boxes as a huge bonus when opposed to constantly swapping to the crowbar as soon as you see the first pixel of a wooden box. Honestly, what is a brutal mod without dual wielding? You can't dual wield everything, only the things that sort of make sense. You can't dual wield all the pistols, yes, even the revolver, which is as powerful as it sounds, on top of that, you're also able to carry two SMGs. Badass factor aside, I found these two a bit underwhelming, considering it's understandably a huge ammo sink. But once you stock up on a bunch of secondary fire grenades, you'll be able to spam them and annihilate anything within sight. There's one weird quirk with dual-wielding weapons. You have to reload them separately from their singular counterparts, since technically the dual-wield options are separate weapons in your inventory. We also got some opposing force weapons ported over, specifically the Desert Eagle and the LMG. The way you get them in the base campaign is mainly via NPCs. May sound stupid, but it does work out better in practice. There's also four powerful and familiar weapons from other boomer shooters. The Plasma Gun and BFG 9000 from Doom, Rocket Launcher and Hyper Blaster from Quake 1 and 2. They're notably much stronger than the Half-Life weapons. You can really only run into them when playing the bonus maps. So, I didn't mention it yet, but this mod starts with a Quake-style hub area where you select your difficulty and then which campaign you want to start. Ranging from Doom, Doom 2, Quake, and Quake 2. Each of these currently contain one map in Beta 2, and all of them are restylized to go with Half-Life's aesthetics. I'm sure if the dev actually plans to recreate these games in Half-Life, because that's an insanely overly ambitious goal. Yeah, don't hold your breath on that idea. Lastly, instead of the tutorial level, we get a zoo map, where you can spawn in enemies and fuck around with the weapons. Now, the negatives. While some of the enemies, like the Hound Eyes, receiving a health buff kinda makes sense since you're automatically much more powerful, with that said, why on earth does the Ichio Ich- Ichio- Shark Dickhead have many boss amounts of health? Even when using one of those OP guns, it still takes a while to kill it. But that's not the main issue. This is. The mod crashes like a bitch. It particularly seems fond on crashing during Office Complex and we got hostiles. So yeah, that's Brutal Half-Life. Now despite how I made seem on their mod DB page, Brutal Half-Life is still in development. The dev occasionally posts cool little gifs of whatever new feature he finally got working. My personal favorite of Beta Free teases is how you'll be able to pick up the Grunt's backpack and get an item out of it. Oh, and Blood's Dynamite is pretty cool too, I guess. If you'd prefer something that'll stick to the vanilla experience a bit more, then Half-Life 1's M-Mod version 2 seems to be over the horizon, with 2021 set as a release date. Actually, take it with a salt of pinch. I'd rather not put any pressure on these modders, especially since they're making these things for no monetary gain. Which one do you think will come out first, M-Mod version 2 or Brutal Half-Life Beta 3? Probably M-Mod. If somehow miraculously both release back to back, I don't know what to say besides, it's time to replay the Half-Life campaign twice. I guess there's also that Spyro mod which is kind of reworking all the Half-Life maps to work with you being Spyro. I'm also interested in that. If all those three mods come out at the same time miraculously, I don't know if I'll be able to replay the campaign three times, I'll be honest. Probably. So to everyone from the RG Historian, 
How was this pilot episode of sorts? Should I refine it a little bit more and release it on the other channels sometime down the line? Half-Life has always been like, I don't know, cl close to my heart. Like almost every year, I feel like I get into this like mega Half-Life 1 mode where I play a bunch of Half-Life mods, probably play for the for a base campaign or two. Oh, and since you're the 20% of whatever percentage of people actually watch my videos to the end, you deserve to see this. What you know about rolling down in the deep When your brain goes numb, you can call that mental freeze When these people talk too much, put that shit in slow motion Yeah, I feel like an astronaut <laughs>